And this is 2,000 points of Black Templars for today's campaign game. So, we have a battalion detachment, and uh, leading this battalion we have two HQs obviously. We have a Chaplain in Terminator armour, and the Emperor's Champion, who I've been trying to feature throughout this campaign in every battle, and so far so good. Um, troops wise, we've gone with actually uh, Bolter Crusaders this time. So. Uh, each squad is exactly the same, so we've got uh, eight bolters, a plasma gun, and a sword brother with a power sword in each, that's the front two there. We then have a ten-man intercessor squad there, all with uh, no upgrades as standard as is. Um, then we're going to the heavy slots. We have a hellblaster squad of five there, all with the normal upgrades. We also have a centurion devastator squad there. They are armed with grab amps and chest missile launchers, or I think they're centurion missile launchers, I'd say. Um, last heavy choice over here is a Land Raider Crusader, and that will be transporting one of the elite choices, which is a Terminator squad here, which is a uh, yeah six-man Terminator squad. So we've got five Thunder Hammers and th uh, shields, and a captain with lightning claws. Um, he'll probably they'll probably be riding with the chaplain in there. And then finally, over here we have a Storm Talon, which is equipped with the uh, Typhoon missile launchers and the twin assault cannons. Um, the uh, Chapman here will be taking the Helm of the Crusader, so you could get a bit, slightly bigger aura. Uh, other than that, uh, normal chapter tactics for the Templars, uh, for the recharge rerolls. Um, and we'll now see what the word bearers have in store from Dom. This is Dom from Black Toad Studios, and this is my chaos list that I'm bringing today. So we've got a battalion detachment here. So we've got a chaos demon prince with wings, Mark of Corn. Two claws, got a Dark Apostle, Mark of Corn, standard, and another Demon Prince, Mark of Corn with wings, and a axe. Uh, we've got four squads of cultists. Over here we've got two combat squads, which are also, as you can guess, Mark of Corn on these guys here. Over here we've got two squads of cultists with auto guns and Mark of Corn. Across here we have got a Traitor Knight with a Thermal Cannon and the chainsaw so that's about 1200 points of chaos the rest will be going into summoning we're going to do a lot of summoning in this game and hopefully bring down the black templars so let's have a look at the mission and deployment so as the black templars and the word bearers accelerate towards this new planet called exactimus there is new knowledge of the artifacts now um, obviously, at the moment, the word bearers are holding three of them, while the Templars are holding one, with one currently lost to the warp at the moment. There is apparently one on this planet. However, although this planet is full of life, by the looks of it, the jungle is taking over here. There is some strange signatures dotted all over the place. Uh, not quite clear which of these objectives is the artifact. There are five on the table. However, only one is the true artifact. And using the knowledge that they have gained so far, they have discovered that the only way to find out whether it is the true artifact is to pick it up and touch it to another. And then the, if it is one of them, it will reveal itself to the holder, thus having the correct artifact. So as the word bearers and black Templars make planet fall, they head towards the location of the signatures for these artifacts and they must now uncover the true one. Who will go home with this last artifact before the game ends? So both forces now deployed on the battlefield and the Templars have lined up on this side of the field. Lots of Crusaders, Land Raider, Land Raider Crusader as well, containing Terminators and opposing them is a horde of cultists. However, the Templars have noted that their force looks slightly light on the ground, so they are expecting some warp reinforcements during the game. Can they hold out against that is the question, but we will see shortly. Just to go over the game rules here, to make sure everyone is clear on how it works, we have five objectives on the board, one here, 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 and down here, so just come out here so you can see all them in the format I ran over the board. Now, you can pick up one of the objectives with infantry and take it to another one. When they touch, you roll a dice on a five plus, one of them becomes the relic or the relic or the artifact that they are hunting. If not, both are discounted from the battle. So eventually one will be left either way. So, 
And they will now see if the Templars can seize the initiative as the word bearers currently have the advantage. No. So we'll now be back in a minute with word bearers, turn one. Turn one movement for the word bearers. So all across the field, the cultists, the demon prince and the dark apostle have all advanced. Demon prince is just slightly behind the cultists at the moment, but the cultists are taking positions up in the buildings. Others are running towards the relics. We've captured one of the relics down here at the moment and we're moving over to the center. Hopefully we're gonna be able to take that down here as well. Everyone's pushing forwards towards this uh, bit of greenery here. On the other side, there's a bolter line. So we're not looking forward to having to engage that. Although we're gonna to have to, if we're gonna win this and take another relic for the war host. Down here on the right, the knight has moved 12. He's about to open fire. Hopefully he's gonna be doing a bit of damage either into the Centurions here or over towards the Lamb Raider. So let's find out what we can do in turn one shooting for the word bearers. Turn one shooting. So the thermal cannon here on the night, open fire, hitting three times on the Centurions, wounding twice and killing two of them quite easily because it's within the 18 inch distance there. The heavy stubber though, put a couple of shots off into Primaris wounding one of them. And that is turn one shooting for the word bearers. We have no combat this turn. So let's move straight over to turn one for the Templar scum. Turn one for the Black Templars, and the Templars are in a zealous fury at the moment. They have us as charged forward across the line. All the Crusader squads and the Intercessors have made a move towards the centre of the table. This relic has been collected by the Intercessors, and this relic over here has been collected by the Crusader squad, trying to find out where the true one lies as quickly as possible. The Land Raider Crusader dropped out the contents here of the Terminators and um, then sped past them to put all of the bolt of fire in range of these two squads here to try and thin them out. The Hellblaster team has rejoined itself onto one floor here. And on this side of the table, the Stormtown has zipped along the side and is going to try and get some straight runs as it crosses this way across the table. The lone Centurion Devastator has decided that he's going to try and do some damage to the Knight. However, how effective that will be, we don't know. So and we'll now move on into the shooting phase for the Black Templars. Starting over on this left side of the field with the shooting phase of Black Templars. The Centurion spun up all his weapons and fired into the Knight here. However, the Knight shrugged off all but one wound, so he is still alive and kicking. Through the centre here, all the bolters in the world <laughs> fired in the general direction of the uh, cultists over here. I think we killed how many in the end was it? 35. 35 cultists, which is not bad. However, obviously, cultists are quite resilient in the fact they can sort of turn up at other parts of the battlefield like nothing happened. So we'll see what happens there. Um, pretty good round of bolt of fire though. So we'll now head on into the shooting phase. Assault. Sorry, the assault phase, I should say. Yeah, and see what happens. So at the end of the assault phase for the Templars, unfortunately the Terminator squad here did try to assault the Demon Prince here but failed by one inch on both occasions even with the reroll. Um, the uh, morale checks were then undertaken, I think we lost a couple over here. These two squads fared very well and the squad that took the most casualties sadly uh, has been wiped off the board. I say sadly but I am a Templar player here so I'm very happy. So, <laughs> however, we'll now move on into the word bearers turn two and see what happens with the relics. Turn two movement for the word bearers. So over here, the two squads of cultists were able to get the relics together. Unfortunately though, it just fizzled into the warp and nothing happened there. Across here, we've got the dark apostle that's moved around here to join with the other cultists. Down here, this Demon Prince summoned three blood crushes, but also suffered three mortal wounds, unfortunately. But over across on this flank here, this Demon Prince was able 
to summon 30 blood letters. 30 blood letters. Hopefully, this might work out well. I've got, nice. Yeah, so we'll see what happens there. And over here, the Chaos Knight is pushing up on this flank. He's going to pick a thermal cannon, cannon shot down into the Lamb Raider to try and get rid of that. And down here, heavy stubber and possibly combat against the uh, Centurion, but we will see. So let's move on to turn two shooting for the word bearers. Turn two shooting for the word bearers. So up here, the squad of cultists occupying the ruined building there, put down auto gunshots into the Astartes holding this relic and took one of them out there. Across the field, the Chaos Knight fired its thermal cannon down into the Lamb Raider, taking 10 wounds off. Very lucky salvo there. So we're gonna move on to assault now, and hopefully we can get some demons into some Marines and claim some skulls for the skull throne. Right, end of turn two assault. As you can see, the blood letters are still here. We, um, we failed our charge by an inch, we used a command reroll and then failed again. So now we're down to three command points here. Across though, the knight got into combat with the Centurion, crushing him under his titanic feet and getting closer to the Primaris Marines. Also across here, another bit of success. The blood crushes charged in, didn't take any damage to Overwatch and just did six wounds before the Juggernauts attacked and destroyed the Lamb Raider. So pretty good. Both of the heavy hitting squads are gone. Although it would have been good to get the blood letters in, they are left frothing with anger. So let's move on to turn two for the Black Templars. So as the Templars enter turn two with a couple of their key units having been destroyed last time, they shift around trying to get the guns to bear in the right locations. The intercessors have piled forward to try and put some fire into this massive blood letter squad along with this crusader squad here. The Terminators have turned around and are going to have an attempt on the night, we hope, along with the chaplain's assistant, assistants, I should say. Uh, over here, the Emperor's champion has turned around to pay attention to the blood letters and along with this Crusader squad have also turned their attention this way to put some fire in, probably with the help of this Hellblaster squad as well. The Storm Tan has done a massive move over this way to get himself in range of this. Uh, the reason for moving so far is because landing here felt a bit too close to Demon Princes either way, but we'll see what happens uh, in the, this shooting phase. So as Templar's turn to shooting ends, the Bolters have answered the call for the blood letters over here, filling out 16 of them with the aid of the flyer up here using its assault cannons to finish off the last few in that squad, although there's still 14 left. So it did fire at the knight as well, but no damage was inflicted. And obviously in the middle here, the blood uh, crushes, I should say, have now been eliminated. That was from some good bolter fire and some backup plasma fire from the Hell Blasters. So we thinned out the crowd again, but I don't think it's enough to say we're anywhere near a victory. So we'll now move on into the assault phase. So the Templars Terminator squad there managed to get in and inflict heavy damage on the knight, taking it to eight wounds left. Six. Sorry, six wounds left on me. Um, and that is actually done by using a stratagem to let them fight twice, uh, which was really helpful. And also just having the chaplain in range for the re-rolls to hit was exceptionally helpful in the second round of combat, although it didn't do as much damage in the first round. There was no other combat there. We elected not to assault the blood letters, uh, hoping to put some overwatch into them, but we will see depending on what the Demon Prince does, obviously. So still relic not found yet. We'll now move on into the word bearers. Turn three. Before we commence with the turn three for Werebearers, there was a morale check to make here and seven more blood letters have fallen. So the odds have evened out a little bit there. We'll now move on into Wordbearers, turn three. Turn three movement for the Wordbearers. And across the field, more demons have leapt from the warp. We've got another squad of 20 blood letters down here. 
Um, we had these dark packed um, stratagem from the dark apostle down there. So we are now down to two command points. We will rock up the war fiend has also appeared and he is facing down against them. He was summoned back here by this demon prince. This demon prince here also did some summoning and another squad of 10 bloodletters have come back here on the relic and that is all our points up. We cannot send for any more reinforcements. Down here we have got two squads of cultists charging headlong towards the hell blasters hoping to take some of their fire away from more valuable targets but these cultists will lay down their lives for the true gods. Nice. So let's move on to turn three shooting for the word bearers and see if we can take more of these uh, lap dogs <laughs> of the false emperor down. Turn three shooting for the word bearers and across the other side of the field, Uzis, shotguns, Kalashnikovs have all fired into the Hellblaster Marines there and taken out one of their number. We're going to do some charges now and hopefully some of the cultists are able to get in there and beat them to death with clubs and sticks. So let's move on to turn three assault for the word bearers. Term free assault for the word bearers. So this cultist squad attempted to charge and took a feeble roll and took some casualties to Overwatch there, so they've slightly dwindled. Over in the centre, Araka originally charged, tried to get a charge in, failed um, miserably, so I couldn't even really re-roll it. Um, this squad also charged with the blood letters, nothing. The cultists made it with a re-roll um, and killed off three of the marines in the centre. Took some heavy casualties, but at least locked them up for a while. Over here, the Demon Prince charged in, killing off, I think, four of the uh, Crusader squad, and they have fallen back all the way down there. The Bloodletters that were here have charged in. Uh, they killed off four of the Primaris, but then died. And finally, the only other thing to report, the Knight has finally fallen. Just enough damage to kill it off. Six wounds were dealt out, six wounds remaining. Um, he fell, I did try, yeah, took one uh, of the Terminators out. He didn't blow up, and I used my last command reroll <laughs> to try and make him blow up, because the damage dealt out would have hopefully helped the word bearer of course. But now the Terminator's been freed up in that corner there. So we are gonna move on now to turn three for the Black Templars, and hopefully they are going to fail miserably and the word bearers will be triumphant. So as the Templars commence turn three, the Hellblasters here have moved away from the cultists over there to get themselves a good shooting solution on them. The Crusaders in the centre of the table here have decided to stay put and stay in combat to provide a buffer from the massive amount of troops on that side of the board. Everything else, troop-wise, so the Intercessors and the Crusaders have moved this way, trying to get the relics together to see if they do hold the correct one. However, odds are now this one over here being the favourite. The Terminators, after their killing of the war machine over here, have directed their attention towards the Demon Prince here, hoping to, if the guns don't do it, get into combat with him and finish him off. And also over here, the flyer has zipped up this way. It's not in the best position at the moment, but it's got, they're gonna go after the one target it can shoot at, which is the guys holding the objective over there. And that is all the movement. We'll now move on to shooting and see if the Templars can get a few scalps. So as the shooting phase ends for the Templars in turn three, over here, the Hellblasters fired a volley into the cultists over here, taking out four of them. And in the middle here, all the bolters, anything else that could fire, fired into the Demon Prince, but only removing, I think it was two wounds in the end. Yep, so nothing too fancy there, but better than nothing. Over here, the Flyer fired everything into the Bud Letters, taking out six of them. So they wanted the leadership, which is good, but it's probably not gonna kill them. So, that's the end of the shooting. Let's see what happens in the combat phase. As turn three ends for Templars, the assault phase has ended. Um, 
Over here, the Terminators managed to get in and actually finish off the Demon Prince, which is good news for them. Uh, unfortunately, the Templars over here did not manage to kill the two remaining cultists, so a pretty poor showing from them. That was all the combat. However, in the morale phase, the Bloodletters here suffered an additional casualty. So that is the end of turn three. We'll now head on to turn four for the Word Bearers. Turn four movement for the word bearers. So in the center, Chaos going for all out assault here. We've got the Demon Prince from the Word Bearer Legion going into the Marines here to assist the last cultist. Araka the War Fiend is heading towards the Primaris Marines here. The mass squad of blood letters are going towards the Terminators. Dark Apostle has also stepped forwards as well to assist in the assault. And the cultists, the last remaining cultists, are going towards the Hell Blasters there. So that is the plan at the moment. Get in there, cause as much damage as we can and cripple the war engine of the Black Templars. So let's move in now into shooting turn four for the word bearers. Turn four shooting for the word bearers. And over here, pistol fire went into the hell blasters there and didn't do anything. Although, um, once again, the squad up here fired their uh, Kalashnikovs and uh, took one wound off the hill blasters there. <laughs> Finally, Oraka threw his axe using his axe, his uh, ranged attack, into the Primaris, killing off one of those, dealing five wounds to one Primaris. Right, so let's move on to Assault and hopefully some of these will pay off and the word bearers will be able to kill a few more of the Templar scum. Turn for assault. So over here, the blood letters charged in, slaying all of the terminators and just doing enough wounds. Their armor in their shields protected them the best they could, but with over 30 attacks coming in, it wasn't enough and they just yeah fell apart. Araka charged in, killing off several more of the Primaris. Primaris have got three in that number left. His unholy frenzy have now given him strength eight, uh, five attacks and movement eight or nine now, so the more he kills, the better he gets, which is quite nice. Over on this flank here, the Apostle and the Demon Prince charged in, finishing off the last of the Marines here. And finally, the squad of cultists have got in, losing one to Overwatch, one to combat, and dealing no wounds there. So that's it for turn four. A lot of damage has been dealt out to the Templars. Of course, the Templars are able to fight back here. There's still some nasty surprises um, for the chaos, I'm sure. So let's move on to turn four for the Black Templars. So as the Templars commence turn four, they're a little bit bruised and battered. They're going to try and fight this one out though. So the Storm Tan has shot overhead and come this way to get a firing solution on these blood letters and or the cultists up here, probably the blood letters. In the middle here, everything has fallen back, although they weren't actually in combat, so they're going to get to shoot. Um, the Empress Champion and the Chaplain have decided to try and deal with Araka, but I think that's going to be quite a tall order, but they're going to have a go. The Primaris here are ready to shoot, so are the Crusaders here. The Hell Blasters, however, are still stuck in combat, so they're going to have to win that fight to be able to activate their Overwatch if they do get charged in the following turn, which is highly likely. So, that is the end of the movement phase in turn four. We'll now move on to the shooting. So at the end of turn four shooting for the Templars down here, Araka was the victim of multiple fire shots from these bolters and uh, from the Primaris and the Crusaders. However, no wounds were done in the end. Um, everything else we had that could fire has fired into the blood letters. I think we took out nine, nine in, the to in total, so not too bad. It's pretty good for the leadership phase at least. So we're now going to head into the combat phase and see if the Templars can hopefully lay the hurt down at least one of these Demon Princes. However, it's going to be a tough fight. So the Templars have lost the Emperor's Champion in the middle here. He fought valiantly and took four wounds off the Demon Prince along with the Chaplain's help who also did two. So he is down to two wounds. However, the Chaplain's on full strength, but there's a lot of stuff circling around here. The Hellblasters did manage to finish off the remaining cultists over here. And I believe we just got a leadership to do for the blood letters, having lost, I think it was nine. Nine, yep. So, so two are definitely going to die. Uh, three, four, five. 
Five, so dead. five more dead from the blood letters. Nothing else needs leadership, so we'll now move on into turn five for the word bearers. Turn five for the word bearers. So down here, Araka is still engaged in combat there. The blood letters are coming through the trees towards the remaining Primaris Marines. The blood letters back here have now decided to push up with the relic there. Down here, the Dark Apostle and the remaining cultists have got the other relic there. And finally, the Demon Prince is heading towards the Hellblaster to finish them off and being the major threat now. They need to be dealt with. Actually, one last thing to mention, the cultists are scurrying around on the balcony, are loading up their guns, aiming into the skies, see if they can do any damage to this beast. Right, so let's move on to turn five, shooting for the word bearers. Turn five, shooting for the word bearers. And sirens, alarms are beginning off as a wound was inflicted on the storm talent from these guys up here. Shotgun down there as well, fired up, causing one wound onto the storm talent there, which I thought was quite good. Across the field, the Dark Apostle and the Cultist Champion fired into the Marines. The Cultist Champion killed off one with his ancient Beretta, killing one of them <laughs> off there. A few thousand years old, yes. but killing one nonetheless. So let's move into assault. See if a rock can kill the chaplain and these blood letters can do something. And five assault for the wear bearers. So blood letters charged in here, killing all but one. The remaining Primaris is holding on to the relic as he battles the blood letters here. Down here, the Dark Apostle charged in. I think he killed off one, but he did take some damage. So he's down to three wounds here. Uh, across the battlefield here, the Demon Prince charged in to the Hellblasters and he's down to one wound. He took several wounds to Overwatch going in. Uh, three of the four Hellblasters overcharged and killed themselves. Yes. So only one remained in combat and he was quickly uh, ripped apart. So that is it for turn five for the Word Bearers. Let's see what the Black Templars can do in turn five. So as the Templars in desperation turn on turn five, the Talon hovers down to try and get nearest to the uh, Araka here to try and kill him off. Um, nothing else could move because obviously everything else is locked in combat. It's looking pretty bleak at the moment, but we'll see what we can do in this turn. So we're going to head straight on into the shooting for the Black Templars. So the Talon came down and managed to destroy Araka, taking a little bit of pressure off the middle here. However, there's still a lot of targets for the tem remaining Templars to deal with. So down here, we're going to go into combat and see if these two units can at least maybe kill one. We shall see. So the Templars bravely fight on here. The Primaris Sergeant here taking a wound, but doing nothing back in the end and in the fight here the apostle has taken a wound but he also managed to kill two of the crusader squads so we're now going to be heading on into turn six of the word bearers because we still haven't got a resolution to this game just yet and we'll see what happens turn six movement for the word bearers and down here the blood letters and the remaining cultists have put the relics together to discover that this relic is actually the one that we're after. So the word bearers currently hold the final objective here. The Demon Prince moved in to try and deal with the Storm Talon. Storm Talon now obviously fully aware that something is going on down here and he's gonna put a lot of firepower into these four members of the uh, 83rd there. So the um, cultists back here getting a taste for um, anti-aircraft fire are going to also put some fire into the Talon there, which is on hover mode at the moment. So let's move into turn six, shooting for the word bearers. So turn six, shooting, learning from the previous damage inflicted by the cultists. Fire was coming in from behind here. Warning sirens are going off and the Storm Talon was able to avoid the incoming fire from the cultists. It's now into turn six, Assault. 
and a demon prince of one wound will be charging into the storm talon. Let's see if it's able to deal with the demon fret. Turn six assault, we're gonna do this one on camera. We're having the Demon Prince charge into the Storm Talon. So we've rolled up for the frag missiles already and we've got an eight, haven't we? So do you wanna roll your eight? Here we go. Oh, nothing so far. Not looking good. Now 12 shots are coming in from the assault cannon. It's gonna pepper into the Demon Prince. Just needs one to go through. So that's three hits here. Okay. So roll to wound. One wound there. Minus one. Come on, come on, don't you dare. Actually two, it's strength six, oh, it isn't, is it? strength six isn't it? Strength six, so, so minus one modifier. I need a four. Don't die, Demon Prince. Chaos, gods protect. Ah, double no, one. double one. So Demon Prince falls, riddled with rounds from the assault cannon. So that's the charges. We're gonna move in now to the remaining combat and hopefully some Templars will be dead here. Right, so the end of turn six combat. Only one marine lives here. Another bit of damage was dealt and he's, yeah, the fight continues. Over here, the demons finished off the last Primaris. And as we saw there, there was a failed charge. Although a little uh, correction on my point, it's uh, toughness six with Demon Prince, not toughness five. So either way, it was a double one, so Demon Prince did die. So let's move on to turn six for the Templar's turn. So turn six for the Templars here. The Talon has stayed down and has primed his weapons to shoot down at these two squads here to try and clear them off the objective. It really needs to happen, otherwise it's going to be pretty much the end game, I think. So we'll move on to the shooting phase and then obviously the combat phase. We still have one ongoing combat back here and see what happens. So the end of turn six for the Templars. The Talon had a very good round of shooting and managed to take off everyone around the current artifact, which is the obviously the live one. So at the moment, no one holds it. However, we do have combat to go. So let's see what happens over here. So the remaining Templar here has been destroyed. So now it is literally only air support for the Templars here. He won't be able to hold the relic, but he might be able to keep them off the relic there to, just to stop them from gaining the objective. So we'll see what happens in turn seven for the word bearers. Turn six movement for the word bearers. So the Dark Apostle has advanced over onto the relic there and the blood letters are moving up to for the kill on the storm town in there. We've also got some fire that's gonna be pouring in from the rear here from the, uh, from the cultists. But this battlefield is strewn with bodies. Um, you must think about how many uh, blood letters have appeared and they've been destroyed. Cultists as well. You're looking easily over 100 casualties for the uh, Chaos Forces that land the Fallen Templars everywhere. So let's move in to turn seven shooting. Turn seven, shooting and assault for the word bearers. So another wound was inflicted as another volley of fire came into the rear of the storm talon there. The uh, blood that has charged in, a couple died to overwatch and uh, one died in the morale phase there, but it's been uh, getting that in combat at the moment. So we're gonna move on to turn seven for the Templars, see if they can do anything to the uh, word bearer forces. So as the last ditch by the Templar's pilot here becomes um, apparent, the uh, flyer here has moved down to get as close to the Apostle as possible in hover mode. It's going to have to take out both units. However, he can't hold that relic and he's going to have to leave the area, um, which means the relic's out in the open and we don't know what's going to happen if it's left alone uh, without an owner. So let's see what happens in the shooting phase. So as turn seven for the Templars ends, the jet has had to fly off, not able to inflict enough casualties to free the relic up. The word bearers have claimed the day by taking the last relic here. So now all of the artifacts have been accounted for bar one and the word bearers are holding four of them 
to the Templars one with one missing in the warp. So what will happen next in this story as they now head towards the sun that appeared at the beginning to see what happens. So we'll now move on to a little roundup and see what we thought of the game. So at the end of this game, we had a pretty brutal matchup. I think we counted up the number of casualties on the word bearer side. What was the total? Was 130? Uh, about, uh, about 130 dead. 130 dead units uh, or individual models, I say, uh, in that particular battle. And obviously Templars wiped out bar a storm talon, so it was pretty bloody. However, I did think the game could have gone either way throughout the whole matchup personally. So um, I thought it was good fun. Any more of the matches for you, Dom? Or... Uh, possibly Dark Apostle. Because um, <laughs> he's still there. <laughs> he's st yeah, he's still alive. He did well. He killed off a squad of Crusaders uh, and kind of held his own throughout yeah. most of the battle there. Excellent. So, yeah, he's done well. Nice. For me, it would be my uh, no longer present uh, Terminators just for taking the knight out when they really needed to. Because that, if that knight had been alive another turn and free to do it, want, that would have been a very different game, I think. So, anyway, all in all, that is the end of the game. We'll be back soon with episode six, the final episode of the campaign. I hope you enjoyed watching it so far, and we'll see you then. This is Tom and Dom from Black Toad Studios.